Hello, third grade cougars, it's Mrs. Bellatash, and we are going to start a new unit. We just finished motion and matter, and now we're gonna start water and climate. And water is a kind of matter, right? We talked about solids, liquids, and gases in second grade, and liquid water is one type of matter. Liquid water can turn into water vapor if it gets hot, or if you cool it, it can turn into solid water known as ice. So what we're gonna to do today is that we're going to investigate some properties of water and how water interacts with different materials. So these are the things you need to get out of your science kit. Now, some of you might have an eyedropper like this, or you might have an eyedropper like this. If you have lost your eyedropper, and you have a straw, you can use a straw instead, and I'll show you how to do that. But So you need one of these types of things. You also need to have a piece of wax paper, the, the paper towel, the plain white paper, and the aluminum foil. And you also have a large piece of wax paper, okay? So we're going to see how water interacts with these materials. Now, I would like you also to get your science notebook and I want you to get this piece of paper, water on surfaces, on surfaces, and put this into your science notebook and date it. And I would like you to write at the top of the notebook, your first entry into this next page. This is the question, what happens when water lands on different materials, question mark. So write that in your notebook, glue this in, and now we're gonna do the experiment. The first thing I wanna show you how to do is how to use this eyedropper in case you don't know how, uh, and it's okay if you don't know how. So right now this air dropper is, this eye dropper or medicine dropper is full of air. So I need to squeeze this end, and when I do, I squeeze out some of the air that's in the bulb. And then if I put it into a cup of water, now wa water went up into the dropper, and I can gently squeeze it, and one drop at a time will come out. So that's how you use this one. You can do the same thing with this one. You can squeeze the end, Put the tip in the water, and you can see that there's water now up in the bulb, okay? And you can slowly draw, drip, 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 drip. Now, what happens if you don't, if you lost these and you can't find it anymore? You can take this straw, put your finger over the end. Actually, put, your, put it in like this, put your finger over the end, and now you have water up in the straw, okay? So, Put, open the end, put the straw in, put the top over, and you've got water trapped up there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is that we're going to put some water on these different types of paper. And we're gonna observe what does the water look like, what does the water do when it lands on these different surfaces. I have my four materials here on the, on the table. And I'm going to use one of these, my eyedropper, and I'm going to squeeze and pull it out. And the first one, it says, how does the, um, the water on the surface, how does it work on wax paper? So I'm going to drop ooh, a piece of water on the wax paper. Ooh, that's very interesting. What does it look like? Looks like a big bead. That is called a bead of water. I wonder if I keep adding water. Ooh, it even has a bubble on it. Oh, it popped. I'm gonna put another bead here. Oh, look at that. So on the wax paper, it makes a bead. The next one is the paper towel. So I've got my eyedropper and I'm going to drop a, some water. Ooh, okay, this is very different. On the wax paper, it's still there. You can still see the bead of water is just sitting on top. 
with a paper towel, it soaks in. I guess this is why people use paper towels. The next one is writing paper. And I'm going to put a drop on my writing paper. So this is interesting. It looks like it starts out as a bead, but then the paper, it seems like it is slowly absorbing the water. Next up is the aluminum foil. Hmm. It does not seem to be absorbing. It's very interesting because the aluminum foil is so shiny, it's hard to see it clearly. So make sure that you do this on your aluminum foil at home. It certainly looks like it's a bead of water and that it is not being absorbed into the aluminum foil. So I want you to make sure that you've you have uh, drawn a picture in each of those boxes so that you show me what did the paper do on each one. On the wax paper, how did the water look on the wax paper? It made a bead, right? It was like a little bubble almost. What happened with the paper towel? It absorbed the water. It soaked it up. What happened with the writing paper? Well, first, for me, first it made a bead, and then it slowly soaked in and absorbed the water. And what happened with the aluminum foil? Well, for me, it made a bead again. All right, cougars, um, I got a tray, but you don't have to have a tray. If you have a piece of cardboard, a long piece of cardboard, um, and you can tape the wax paper to the cardboard. And I'm gonna make a little ramp. Remember when we made a ramp with a car going down the ramp? So I'm gonna make a little ramp like this. I've got some blocks. You can use a block, you could use some books, but I'm gonna make just a, I'm gonna make a, a ramp with just one block for right now. And I've got my eyedropper and some water. And I'm going to uh, take some wa water drops and I'm going to put it on my ramp. And I want to see what happens ooh, to my beads of water when I put them on the wax paper. So I have just one block and there's my tray. You can have a piece of cardboard, no big deal, and just tape the wax paper onto it so it doesn't come off. And now I'm going to take my eyedropper and I'm going to put a drop of water here. It's just sitting there, right? I'm going to put a bigger drop here. Oh, when it gets to a certain size, it started to roll down. Let's try again. Ah, I wonder what's going to happen when those two get together. Oh, they pop together. Very interesting. So guys, I want you to practice. I want you to try a bunch of different things. Put different size drops of water. Woo! See what happens. Try different sizes of water. Try different um, angles for the tray. I have just one block now, but you could do two blocks. You could do three blocks. And do it very methodically. See what happens with different amounts of water on different heights of the tray. I hope you guys had fun rolling drops of water down the slope. So what made the water roll down the slope? There's a force. It's the pull of gravity, right? Gravity is always pulling things down to the earth. Now, I would like you to get this next piece of paper from your science kit. Um, it's called Water on a Slope. And for some reason, you could cut it in half and you could put it on your paper um, because there's three questions that I want us to answer, okay? So cut it out, glue it in your notebook, and then we're going to answer the question. So you have this glued in.
And let's talk about those three questions. The first question is, what rule describes the direction that the water domes move. So the water dome is like the bead of water. So the water dome or the bead of water. So which direction does it move and why? Well, the water dome always moves down the slope. And guys, why does it move down the slope? Because gravity is pulling on the water to pull it down the slope. Number two, what is the cause and effect relationship between the size of a water dome and the speed at which it moves? Well, bigger water domes move down the slope faster. And so that would mean that smaller water domes move down the slope slower. Very good. Number three, what is the cause and effect relationship between the slope of a surface and the speed at which a water dome moves? Well, I found that the steeper the slope, the faster the water moves. Now, it's very interesting because this is very useful for when we want to build something, right? If you are living on a very steep hill and you have um, a, a hill behind you and it's raining, the water is going to come down that hill faster if it's a steep hill than if it's a lower uh, hill. And if the water, if the material of the, of the hillside is very slick, kind of like the wax paper or the aluminum foil, the water's going to come right down. But if you have something porous, kind of like the paper towel, soil, then it will soak in or absorb the water. So it's fun to play with these beads of water. But we have to kind of think about how we could use this in our real life. Now, uh, Cougars, I don't always say this, but I want to make sure that you know that you still are responsible. Even though we've done all of this, now you need to write your own question that you might have about water or materials. Make sure that you write a question in the science notebook.